All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have another speaker. His name is Professor Jan Stanisław Czechonowski. He's from the University of Warsaw, Poland. And he's going to be talking about the contribution of Polish intelligence services to the Allied victory over Germany in World War II. Professor Czechonowski. You have 20 minutes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to express my gratitude to the organizers of this conference. It's always a great pleasure to come back to, uh, to Washington. Uh, please allow me to present a short highlight about the contribution, contribution of the Polish intelligence service to the Allied victory over Germany in World War II. The Polish military intelligence created with the establishment of the reborn Republic of Poland in November 1918 was considered during the following years as an efficient service, but practically concentrated on its neighborhood, which means its efforts were mainly focused on Germany and the Soviet Union. Before the outbreak of World War II in Poland, the Polish Second Bureau of uh, the General Staff foresaw more or less the scale of the Nazi German invasion and its strength, but on the other hand was not able to obtain the proper information on the Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact and the coordinated plans of these two totalitarian dictatorships towards Poland. Starting from the first day of World War II, the Polish contribution was already very important, and it was the knowledge of Enigma. Poles were the first to break this German machine in 1942. The main author of this big success was Marian Rejewski. a brilliant cryptologist who for the first time used a mathematical method to break codes and not a linguistic one. He was supported by his two colleagues, Henryk Zygalski and Jerzy Ruzycki. In July 1949, the Polish intelligence passed all the data about breaking Enigma to the French and British allies a cooperation to keep up with German improvements in the functioning of Enigma was agreed upon. Before the fall of France, the Poles were the most advanced in decoding German messages, more, than, more so than the British. There is no evidence that the British would have been able to break the Enigma cipher codes and gotten to know its mechanisms without Polish help. Employing thousands of specialists, spending enormous amounts of money, and even gaining original specimens of Enigma during war activities could not have been enough to break Enigma. In the opinion of Rajewski, the British, without, without the help of the Poles, could not have read even one German cipher message. The betrayal of Enigma were secrets by the Poles or French, who were in German hands, might have ended in a very fatal manner for the Allies' war effort. But nobody betrayed the secret. Two Polish cryptologists of merit were killed in German concentration camps. Three perished in a sea catastrophe. The rest survived. But after 1942, they were not engaged in deciphering Enigma codes as they were not needed anymore. Among so many Poles who knew all there was to know about Enigma and the achievements of Bletchley Park, 
Not one of them was a Soviet or German spy. Yet a film from 2001 called Enigma, directed by Michael Eptit and based on the novel by Robert Harris, depicted a fictitious Polish traitor who attempted to betray Enigma secrets to the Germans as an act of revenge for the silencing that the Soviets perpetrated the Katyn massacre. Nowadays, there is no possibility for serious, serious researchers to claim that the British were the ones who broke the Enigma code. But during many years after the war, the fact that the Poles were the first to win over the Germans in that aspect was, for the most part, ignored or diminished. For example, in 1974, a legend was created by British Colonel Frederick Winterbottom. During the war, he was an officer in Bletchley Park, and in his book, he invented a figure of a fictitious Polish engineer who was said to have helped the British to break Enigma. In reality, breaking this German machine was Poland's biggest contribution to the victory during World War II. It enabled the Allies to gain the advantage, allowing them to end the war earlier. It contributed to the victory of the battle at Atlantic, the battles of El Alamein, and also to victories at Normandy and Italy in 1944. It was undoubtedly the biggest cryptological success in history. It facilitated a creation by the British in Bletchley Park of their own system called ULTRA. The British, and later also Americans, uh, the British and later also American contribution to continue breaking Enigma was enormous and impressive. The Polish output was not wasted. It was continued and developed in a very fast, productive, and creative manner. But Enigma was not the only contribution of the Polish intelligence to the victory. In September 1940, sometime after the collapse of France, an official cooperation between the British Secret Intelligence Service, SIS or MI6, and the Polish Second Bureau was established. An agreement was signed as the Polish government in exile in London possessed a special status with a right to maintain an independence intelligence service and still 1944 uncensored radio communications. Poles agreed to pass all secret data with the exception of information concerning internal Polish issues. In return for that, the second bureau was to receive from the British general analysis of information. The Polish Secret Service was working first of all for the British war effort and was financed by British authorities. The Second Bureau had already well-developed intelligence network in occupied Europe. But in point of fact, the strength of the Polish service was that in a very short time during the war, it could have expanded very well its activities almost worldwide, due in great part to its improved methods of operating created before the conflict. An important part of war Polish intelligence staff had nothing to do with this kind of activity before the war, but they learned quickly. The Polish government would not have been able to use militarily to its advantage all the results of the work of Polish networks. According to the needs of the British and later American allies, the Polish military intelligence was delivering messages from Europe, including Germany or France, North Africa, the Far and Middle East, North and South America, and even from the Philippines. This work was carried out by more than 40 intelligence stations and posts, hundreds of officers and staff members, and thousands of agents. The number of Polish intelligence reports given to SIS increased systematically. 
Between uh, 1940 and 44, the British were given more than 32,000 intelligence reports, more than 4,000 counterintelligence reports, more than 4,000 messages from the disinformation action, and more than 35,000 radio intelligence intercepted and read German messages. The majority of the Second Bureau posts were receiving excellent evaluation reports, especially in Europe and French North Africa. We have here the statistics. As we can see, 8% excellent report, 70% very valuable. Sometimes the only concrete information available was from Polish sources. Long delays in getting those reports to London from occupied Europe, especially from the Eastern Front, were a frequent hardship. Colonel Stanisław Gano, chief of the Polish Second Bureau, stated that the Polish contribution was 70%, 70% of the Allies' intelligence effort. After the war, this number was confirmed by officers of Special Operations Executive, SOE. Probably the best intelligence station of the Second Bureau was one called Africa, created on British request in July 1941, whose location was in Alger. The SIS stated that they had not been able to quickly create an efficient intelligence post there. The station was led by Major Mieczysław Słowikowski, who cooperated closely with, uh, American, with the American diplomat Robert Murphy and his staff, composed of vice consuls who worked for the American Secret Services. Słowikowski was passing reports to the American consulate. In return, the Polish officer was able to send written messages by American diplomatic back. In the opinion of British historian Stephen Doriel, the Africa Post was the widest and the best allied intelligence network under the rule of the Vichy government in French Western Africa. There is no doubt that in 1941 and 42, the Africa Post played a leading role in delivering information for planning the allied invasion on, of North Africa, Operation Torch, which was silenced many years after the war and still in many elaborations, the paper of Słowikowski's network is not emphasized enough. Air Force Captain Roman Chernyaski played a special role trained to be an intelligence officer during the conflict. In Paris, uh, he headed one of the most efficient networks in France, but in 1941, he was arrested by the Germans. He apparently agreed to collaborate with Abwehr, and after Ger the German simulation of his escape, he came to Great Britain, where he revealed all the circumstances of the case. Czerniowski served later as an apparent uh, double agent under the name of Brutus. He played a very important role in a so-called double-cross system of deception and misinformation given to the German intelligence before the invasion of Normandy. He helped to convince Abwehr that landing there would only be, be a diversion and that the main forces would attack Pas de Calais and Dunkirk. According to British intelligence, the role of Brutus was, I quote, almost impossible to be overestimated, end of quote. In the same way, he helped to fool Germans about the results of bombing London with V1 and V2 weapons. He deceived the enemies by telling them that uh, telling them they were bombing the suburbs of London when they were actually bombing the center of the city. The Germans changed strategy, causing the center of the British capital to be far less destroyed. I could continue with a long list of uh, Polish intelligence achievements from all over the world, but there is no time, so just a few words, a few words about the most outstanding results. 
this is V1, V2. Here we have uh, Major Michał Rybikowski, who played an ingenious intelligence game against Germans in Stockholm. Heinrich Himmler stated that he was the most dangerous officer of the Polish intelligence. His activity was tied to the Polish assistance to a Japanese, Japanese uh, consul in Kaunas, Lithuania, Tsune Sugihara, who, who saved at least 2,139 Polish and Lithuanian citizens of Jewish na nationality or origin by handing them transit visas. A large amount of these visas were falsified by the Vilnius Polish Union for Armed Struggle, a predecessor of Armia Krajowa, the Home Army. Another hero was Lieutenant Colonel uh, Jan Kowalewski, one of the most outstanding Polish officers who had an important intelligence post uh, in Lisbon. In the name of the Polish government, he tried to help bring Romania, Hungary and Italy to the Allied side, but his efforts, efforts fizzled, mainly because of the principle of the unconditional surrender of the Axis countries, established in January 1943 in Casablanca by Churchill and Roosevelt. Another Polish service played a special role in this intelligence game, the one run by the Home Army in Poland. Um, the British SOE considered this intelligence as perfect and valuable source of information and was grateful for, I quote, a wonderful work carried on in such difficult and dangerous conditions." End of quote. The Western Allies generally considered the Home Army intelligence as the best one of its kind at that time in Europe, active not only in occupied Poland, but also in numerous places in the Third Right, in the Eastern Front, in uh, Czech and the Moravian Protectorate, Slovakia, Lithuania, the Bal Baltic States, Ukraine, Belarusia, and Russia, in spite of a constant and daily risk to the lives of the members. The Polish intelligence paid a big price. Many officers and agents were killed by Germans, but it should be mentioned that also the Second Bureau posts in uh, occupied France suffered many losses. The Home Army Intelligence Service delivered crucial information about the German order of battle, military operations, data from observation at ports, morale, results of bombings, and the situation in occupied Poland and other countries. It was arduous and dangerous work. There, was, there were also spectacular successes like obtaining details about plans to attack France and later the Soviet Union, plans of new types of uh, German submarines, U-boats, armored units, and most importantly, informations, information plans and pieces of deadly German V1 and V2 weapons. Also very important information was passed on by the Poles about the existence of gas chambers used by Germans to assassinate millions of Jews, but also Poles and representatives of other nations. Reports which were considered to be an exaggeration for example, by the chief of the British Joint Intelligence Com uh, Committee, William Cavendish Benting. Finally, a few words on a not widely known intelligence co collaboration between American and Polish secret services. The first step to establishing cooperation was the first visit of General Władysław Sikorski, Polish Prime Minister and Commander-in-Chief, to the United States in March and April of 1941. As a result, Major Jan Henryk Zichoń, Chief of the Polish Intelligence Department of the Second Bureau, came to the US and had talks with Colonel, later Brigadier General William Donovan, who as coordinator of information was given the task to construct an efficient system of intelligence um, of American intelligence, similar to European ones. In September, both officers signed a confidential agreement on the intelligence cooperation. A regular exchange of documents and information 
concerning subjects crucial for the war effort and the creation of, of the so-called STZ Polish intelligence post in New York was agreed upon. In the following month, the Poles began to deliver to the Americans very comprehensive materials, which from the beginning were evaluated very highly. The Polish government wanted to obtain technical, uh, technical support, especially in communications in various parts of the world, and first of political benefits. A turning point for the development of the Polish-American intelligence cooperation was, of course, the Pearl Harbor attack. From 1942, intelligence reports for Donovan were being passed, passed through a liaison office in New York, led by Alan Dulles, later famous for being the director of uh, the CIA. Yeah. The Polish reports were delivered to various American intelligence agencies. Office of Strate Strategic Services created as Donovan's new intelligence body, Military Intelligence Division, G2, Naval, Naval Intelligence, and also the FBI. Um, in uh, winter 1941, Major Zrichon wrote in English a special project of an efficient American secret service. It's a document of 48 pages with detailed suggestions. It seems obvious that the Americans asked Zichon to prepare such a paper. Generally, the Polish officers were instructing their American partners at their request on the organization and methods of using information, what is today difficult to imagine, but it happened. In the beginning, the Poles considered American officers as very keen amateurs, and various sections of analysis branches of the OSS and G2 as weak ones, because of, um, of some defects in the evaluations of the material received. Later, the, these same Polish officers noticed an increased development of these uh, services. I must, do, I must conclude, so um, just a few opinions about, about the Polish intelligence service. Uh, Colonel I, Ivan Yitten, a chief of the Eastern European section of G2. I quote, the Polish Second Bureau passing valuable and actual information contributes in a considerable manner to strengthen the position of uh, American general staff. William Donovan, I quote, the reports of the Polish Intelligence Bureau present, uh, um, present to the American general staff an extraordinary value. They belong to the most important contributions received by the general uh, staff. Hayes Kroner, Assistant Chief of the Military Intelligence Division, expressed to General Sikorski his particular uh, appreciation for the Polish intelligence work saying, I quote, the Polish army has the best intelligence all over the world. Its value for us is priceless. Unfortunately, in return, we can give little, end of quote. Um, just I will pass. These opinions um, were shared also by, by, the, by the British at, at the end of the World War II, Commander Wilfred Dunderdale, Chief of a Special SIS Liaison Officer for Contacts with Poles, in his summary report presented to Prime Minister Churchill, concluded stating that, I quote, Polish agents worked unceasingly and well in Europe during the last five years, and they provided, often at great danger to themselves and to their relatives, a vast amount of material of all kinds on a wide variety of subjects. The Polish intelligence service make, made an invaluable contribution to the planning and the successful execution of the invasion of Europe and to the ultimate victory of the Allied forces in Europe." End of quote. After the war, the uh, Sir John Colville, uh, British Prime Minister, Churchill Secretary, wrote that the Poles were probably the best players in that game. The Poles were generally more modest. The last chief of the Polish intelligence, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Witold Langenfeld, wrote, 
I quote, the Polish contribution in the overall intelligence is enormous. I don't want to say that we were the best intelligence service. However, we belonged to the world's top intelligence services, end of the quote. Why so, uh, why for so many years was there so little information on Polish achievements in, in the intelligence war during the world conflict? First of all, Poland uh, was not independent and normally secret services are not eager to reveal their secrets. Some officers and agents participated in the Cold War. But there was also another reason. In 1945 and 46, uh, a documentation of the Polish um, intelligence service during the war was given by deposit to the British. And the Polish side um, began official efforts for the return of the Second Bureau documentation in 1999 when the Polish State Archives received from the British Cabinet Office an answer that these documents were destroyed because they were considered of ephemeral value. This caused quite a heated uh, reaction in Poland and among Poles, the Poles abroad. Prime Minister Buzek uh, inquired Prime Minister Tony Blair of the whereabouts of these papers. In 2000, this initiative brought a Polish-British historical committee to uh, creation. The result was a very wide research in many countries, also in the US National Archives in College Park, Maryland, and also two volumes of a publication, publication about the Polish intelligence contribution to World War uh, II. Uh, the activity of this body should not be should be considered as just the beginning. There is still a lot of research to conduct. Uh, we focus mainly now on the information about the Polish perspective, but later there will be time to uh, to see uh, how important was it was. Um, really. The wartime effort of the Poles, however great, did not influence the decision of our West Western allies to help in recovering our independence. Poland didn't have an army strong enough, in spite of a, of a relatively big contribution on the battlefields and an excellent intelligence service, to assure the victory over all the enemies of our independence. There is absolutely no doubt that the intelligence service of wartime free Poland with a global character during the conflict contributed in the Allied victory over Germany. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Chehanyowski.